Today on Ramblings with Rebecca, European Consensus. When I introduced the European Convention on Human Rights and the European Court on hu of Human Rights, um, I've talked about this court as being pretty much the most progressive and intense protection scheme for human rights that we have, particularly for individuals. Uh, there are 47 member states of the European Court, all the member states of the Council of Europe, which includes EU and non-EU members. More than 800 million people are protected under this scheme. Any individual can take a state to court and the state is obligated to comply with the judgment. This is a really big deal. Um, so surely this European Court of Human Rights that's based in Strasbourg must be the most wonderful thing in the history of existence, right? Yay, human rights protections. However, of course, tons of critique, tons and tons of critique. Uh, it is the dominant and the most far-reaching human rights systems that we've got, but it does not impose the highest possible standard for human rights protections. Um, but surely it's Europe. Surely it's just progressive as can be. The court instead operates under European consensus. It's looking for a minimum standard rather than a maximum standard, a minimum standard regarding a particular issue when it makes a judgment. It's looking for evidence of legal, political, cultural, social consensus of the 47 European countries. Um, so, and it does then take that minimum benchmark for where human rights protection lies. Uh, this, of course, is particularly around those qualified or restricted rights that we talked about, right? I mean, so the court is not going to, you know, give a state leeway for an absolute right, like the um, prohibition of torture, as I talked about in the absolute versus um, qualified rights bit. The European Court, in fact, makes several vastly unpopular decisions about absolute rights and the fact that those can't be bent in any way. Uh, but for qualified restricted rights, it does look for a minimum standard or for rights which are really, really strong but involve progressive realization, so involve state resources, um, you know, right to housing, food and water, things like this. When the state has to devote resources to something, right, it, it, the court's not going to judge that 100% of the GDP has to go towards this one particular right, of course. It's looking for consensus around where the minimum standard is of protection of a certain right in making a judgment. This is heavily critiqued. Is it a race to the bottom? Uh, does it mean that you know we're only ever meeting the minimum threshold and that's never going to go up? Uh, how do you balance you know the fact that we want human rights to mean something and to mean something they have to have some kind of threshold but also kind of some kind of stability with the fact that also we do want to progress in some ways, right? Um, uh, gay marriage is one topic that comes up a lot uh, around these issues. And thus far, for the most part, the European court has not judged that um, marriage between LGBT individuals is an absolute necessary right, um, particularly with marriage uh, as you know, the exact same thing as heterosexual marriage. And, um, in the countries. And this is because there's not European consensus around it yet. Um, states are still deeply divided around this issue. States are implementing a variety of schemes and techniques. Um, you know, some of them have a kind of civil partnership benefits package, similar, some don't have any, others allow full gay marriage, but there's not consensus around it yet. Right? So the court is really looking at what are all of the states doing in common you know, or the vast, vast, vast majority of all the states doing in common, and that's where we're going to make sure that states are hitting. The upside of this is that it means it actually happens, right? States are very likely to comply happily. They have to comply under the mechanism, but of course, a state could, you know, go and revoke, you know, its um, status. And, and pull out of the system altogether. So if the court goes too progressive or too fast or makes judgments at too high a level, it's just going to lose all of the states and no longer have any authority, is the rationale. Compliance is forced, and that's a good thing, but it means that you know it's got to keep states on board. Uh, so these are judgments rather than views. At the United Nations level, um, we have much loftier language uh, and a lot more said that sounds much more progressive but virtually all of that really really good sounding stuff is not fully required of states then if at all um, so this European consensus idea is frustrating and requires patience but at the same time it means that there's actual compliance
by all means, debate whether it's a good or good enough thing. Um, there are re some really interesting places to go online um, to see people argue about these things. Strasbourg Observer, highly recommend and we'll put on the bottom.